Hi guys and welcome to China Perspectives. My name is Miriam Bickertsheim and you may know me as a German recruiter in Asia. Today I want to share a bit about a hot topic at this moment, the semiconductor industry. If you're reading the news these days, these are big topics and we hear different governments, especially the United States, but also others, paying a lot of attention to it. As of today, China is not yet self-sufficient when it comes to semiconductors. So if you don't know, semiconductors are basically foundational technology that makes almost all of the modern things run. You absolutely need semiconductors for things like smartphones, computers, cars, medical devices, household appliances, industrial robots, but also for national security, for everything from missiles to drones to satellites to cybersecurity and so on. Semiconductors power everything from artificial intelligence to autonomous vehicles to quantum computing or smart cities. At the moment, there are some leading companies who produce the majority of them. For example, companies you may have heard about are Samsung, of course, Nvidia, Taiwan Semiconductor, Broadcom, Intel, Micron, and so on and so on and so on. As countries compete globally, and especially the competition between, for example, China and the US is intensifying, especially with the new administration under Mr. Trump, the US has imposed a range of regulations that means that many semiconductors or semiconductor manufacturing tools are restricted for export to China by the US, especially the more advanced ones. This is part of a broader strategy to limit Chinese access to cutting-edge chip technology for both economic and security reasons. So in short, these things are super important. China cannot make them yet at the level and the quantity that China needs themselves, and the US and in part other countries are trying to slow down China's development here. So what does China do? China does what it does best. China is making long-term plans and puts them into action. And this is what I want to talk about today. So there's a strategic investment plan, which is nicknamed the Big Fund. The official name is long. It's called China's National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund. But commonly, it is referred to as the Big Fund. It represents one of the most ambitious state-led industrial initiatives of the 21st century. The first version of the Big Fund was actually already started back in 2014 and part of the whole preparation for the Made in China 2025. I have a separate video about that, which I will link for you in the below. These policies are very important and I often feel the rest of the world does not pay the attention to it as it should. The large majority of these strategies, policies, initiatives end up materializing and working out to at least a good degree because China is such a long-term planning country and if foreign governments and firms would read this a little bit more detailed, then we would also know where the journey is going. Anyways, this fund, the big fund, has been at the heart of China's big and very important target to achieve semiconductor self-sufficiency. This is a strategic goal integral to technological independence and economic security for China. As of 2025, with the third and largest phase of the big fund underway, this fund continues to shape not only China's semiconductor landscape, but global geopolitics around technology. So what is the strategic thinking behind the big fund? So as I said, the Big Fund was established under China's wider Made in China 2025 plan, aiming to break the country's deep dependency on foreign, especially US investors, semiconductor technologies and supply chains. China has a big overarching strategy to be as independent on foreign firms and suppliers for all their key technology as possible. And we see this play out in many different industries. Semiconductors are the foundation of all modern electronics, and as such, very important. China is actively aiming to take global leadership with product categories, which you could call future-related technologies, from really from drones to autonomous driving and so on. For China, controlling these critical industries ensures national security, economic resilience, and global technological leadership. 
the big fund strategy evolved across three phases. Initial infrastructure building phase one, which was from 2014, 2019, consolidation and focus on ship manufacturing and core equipment in phase two, which was from 2019 to 24, and from 2024 onwards in phase three, a broadening scope targeting AI chips, memory technology, and key bottlenecks, links in the supply chain. Phase three, where we are in now, was registered with a capital of 344 billion RMB, very roughly 48 billion US dollar, billion with a B, and explicitly emphasizes AI semiconductors, memory, both NAND and DRAM ambitions, tooling and supply chain nodes. So what does it mean? That means the big fund is not new. We are already now in phase three of the big fund and it has already progressed. It's not at the beginning. The infrastructure has been built and core equipment is there. Now the plan for these coming years under phase three is to really focus on making serious progress towards semiconductor self-sufficiency. So while they have been making a lot of progress, China still faces considerable hurdles in advanced ship technology. There are some analysts that project that by the end of this year, China may source roughly 30% of its semiconductor equipment domestically and import all the rest. The target, by the way, is 70%, so there's quite a bit of a shortfall. However, take these numbers with a little bit of a grain of salt because there are different ways to measure it, depending on whether chips are measured by value, by units, or by functions. But nonetheless, it gives you an idea. Given how geopolitics have taken a turn for the worse this year, we can bet that China is doubling down their efforts in this particular field. And challenges remain, notably in cutting-edge ship production beneath 14 nanometer nodes due to continued reliance on foreign lithography equipment, particularly EUV lithography and other advanced tools. The fund's third phase, where we are in now, is larger than its predecessors, with about 344 billion RMB committed and focuses heavily on AI chips, memory, DRAM, and NAND ambitions, and advanced manufacturing to really close these gaps. Companies such as SMIC have reported progress towards seven nanometer class processes, but production scale, yields, and tools access lag behind the top global players. So for example, there are local firms like the Yangtze Memory Technology, so that's a company focusing mainly on NAND and 3D NAND. And then there are firms like Chongqing Memory Technologies, which is focusing more on DRAM. So they have been beneficiaries receiving support, even so DRAM remains a particularly challenging segment to catch up in. What smart people tell me is something to watch out for in the future is China's specific efforts to develop domestic electronic design automation, short EDA software. So that's a significant bottleneck right now alongside lithography equipment. So this is something we may start hearing more about in the future, also in mainstream news. So what we can really see is that despite the fact that this is a really, really difficult technology to develop, having a leg up here or reaching self-sufficiency will be a huge enabler for China as a country and for Chinese firms, especially in the current geopolitical situation and even more so with the huge wave of Chinese firms going global, we call it Shuhai, Shuhaiing, and coming to your doorstep wherever you are watching this video. So that also means that a lot of geopolitical and economic importance is attached to the success of the big fund. Semiconductors are not merely industrial products, but have evolved into strategic assets central to global economic power and national defense. For China, semiconductors underpinning and ambitions to lead in AI, 5G, and next generation technology. So this is super important and ranked very, very high on the list of priorities. Consequently, the current market leaders in the US and in the EU view China's semiconductor advancement with, I guess, concern, fearing geopolitical and economic shifts. In particular, the US and partners have implemented export controls that really restrict the sale of certain high-end shipmaking equipment, most notably high-end lithography, such as EUV systems, for example, advanced EDA software, and other enabling tools to Chinese firms. 
China in turn responds with tariff adjustments and its own industrial policy countermeasures. So there's a lot of tit for tat going on. These tensions contribute significantly to the broader US-China trade and technology rivalry, and they are a primary driver behind China's intensified domestic investment. So since this fund is so important, who and how does it get managed? And no, it's not Mr. Xi Jinping, as foreign friends sometimes ask me. This is not how, how things actually work. Just like our chancellor or the president in your country does not randomly and personally manage an investment fund, or I guess I hope that doesn't happen. So the management and transparency of the big fund is a company called Sino IC Capital. It manages the big fund with a two-tier system. So you have the fund structure that is reflected in a two-tier system where state anchor investors, so for example, you have the big government players such as the Ministry, Ministry of Finance specifically, the China Development Bank, which of course is state-owned by the state, and other major banks and local governments. And they sit at the ownership, or I guess we can say they are an anchor layer. And then there's a separate investment management vehicle, which is, as I said, called Sino IC Capital, and it executes the actual investments. But as always, when there's a lot of money involved, things don't always go so smoothly, if you know what I mean. Despite its overall quite good results and successes, there have been allegations and investigations into mismanagement and corruption among some of their senior executives, senior staff, causing industry unease. So, for example, in recent probes in 2022 by China's Central Commission for Discipline, inspection revealed violations by former and current executives implying certain lapses in transparency in governments related to graft and financial misconduct. These anti-graft investigations raised government's concerns but did not stop the fund's investment activities. But nonetheless, of these concerns, the fund has already been successfully supporting major players like SMIC and Yangtze Memory Technologies, indicating substantial industry influence. And as you know, it is Western countries and policymakers who are trying to slow down the growth of China in this aspect. So, of course, the establishment and the success of the big fund has created some waves and drawn international criticism and strategic concerns. So what we see is that international players, especially in the US and in the EU, criticize China's big fund for its heavy state subsidies, which they say distort global markets and threaten fair competition. What is more important is that many Western countries fear China's semiconductor self-sufficiency and that it may reinforce technology decoupling, dividing or splitting the global supply chain and reducing interoperability. In my personal opinion, China is already knee deep in the middle of decoupling from the West. So a few years ago, after the pandemic, we heard all those news in the newspapers of Western politicians saying, you know, we need to decouple, we need to decouple. But in reality, I don't really see that happening on a large scale. China, however, China is decoupling for real and aiming for self-sufficiency, not only in semiconductors, but in many, many other industries. I also made a video about this, which I will link for you below. So semiconductor technology enables military capabilities, critical infrastructure, and so on. So countries worry about strategic vulnerabilities if China's industries overtake or isolate key technologies. These concerns of the Western countries and policymakers underlie export controls, sanctions, and effort to curb China's access to this essential technology. The expert control and allied policy measures are aimed at limiting China's access to the highest end manufacturing and design capabilities. And in turn, China's subsidies and funds accelerate localization efforts, a dynamic that really increases strategic composition and the risk of a split global tech landscape. So what can we expect? It is not unthinkable that we will end up having two ecosystems developing independently, one Chinese one and a Western one at the same time. And it will be on countries, companies, and ultimately also consumers who will decide which one will win out. But you can bet for sure that the respective governments, all of them, by the way, will try their hardest to make sure their swans will win. 
So I do not at all expect this competition to slow down at all. I think it will intensify. When we're looking at recent development on outlooks, we see that in 2024 last year and this year 2025, the big fund number three began deploying capital with a strategic mandate to spur industry consolidation, invest in AI-focused semiconductor or firms, and develop key supply chain nodes. Big funds number three, register capital is also much larger in terms of the predecessors, and I think this also gives an idea for what's to come. It is now poised to become China's largest semiconductor investment vehicle ever, and I mean ever, and think about what that means and how important that is. Plans for next year, 2026 and beyond, emphasize longer-term investments and strategic deals to solidify control over the ecosystem, and this includes you know, potential consolidation among domestic players even, greater investment in domestic tooling and EAD capabilities, and of course strategic partnerships to secure key materials and equipment. However, a lot of this will also depend on both the domestic execution and the evolving international export control environment. So, in conclusion, China's big fund is yet another big and important plan officially published, running for years, not secret, and widely available online, also in English. And it shows the world China's plan for its broader narrative of technological ambition, industry policy, and geopolitical rivalry. Its journey and also the pursuit of semiconductor self-sufficiency is indispensable for China's economic independence and global stature. So even if you as a firm or even you as an individual are not in the actual semiconductor industry, much of what you use daily has a chip inside. So you are going to be affected. Understanding the big funds trajectory is important and helpful to grasping future shifts in global technology and trade relations. Tell me, how are things in your country? Do you know of any comparable program or strategies? I'd love to hear about it. Guys, I hope you found this as interesting as I try to share a bit about what I see going on in China and what I believe we can expect in the years to come. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like or leave me a comment. Bye, guys.